get set for this non-conference game one of the two-game series between Alabama and Virginia Tech. And here is the DCH starting lineup for the 12th ranked Virginia Tech Hokies. The starters are presented by DCH Health System. DCH Health System has been providing quality and compassionate health care in West Alabama for nearly 100 years. DCH is a champion for your health and proud supporters of the Crimson Tide. The Hokies are 24-4-1 on the year, and in true road games, they are 8-2-1 on the season. Currently on a four-game win streak, they swept Pitt in the ACC series this past weekend, and they took on Maryland Eastern Shore uh, on Wednesday, and it was a close one as the Hokies beat Maryland Eastern Shore by a final score of 25 to nothing. So we will discuss that a little bit more as the game goes along. But here's the starting lineup for Pete DeMores. Hokies, the center fielder, Emma Ritter, will lead things off with Addie Green, the left fielder, batting second. Batting third is Cameron Fagan, the second baseman. Bree Peck, the third baseman, will bat fourth. Batting fifth is Corey McMillan, the right fielder. Michelle Chatfield, first base, batting sixth. Maya Luke, Luco, the designated player, will bat seventh. Batting eighth is Zoe Yeager, the catcher, and batting ninth is Annika Rose, the shortstop. They'll face in the circle for Alabama, the right-handed graduate from Jackson, Tennessee, the transfer from Central Arkansas, Kayla Beaver. Beaver on the year with a .91 ERA and a 9-2 record. 16th appearance of the season and 13th start. She has seven complete games on the year. She's pitched 77 innings, 42 hits, 16 runs, 10 have been earned. She's walked 24, struck out 81. Opponents batting 161 against Beaver on the year, coming off of the complete game win over Georgia in Athens on Sunday is the Beave. Defensively for the Crimson Tide, Jenna Johnson's in left, Kristen White in center, Lauren Johnson in right, Dowling at third, Cahalen at short, Hevlin at second, Dukeshire at first, Giles catching, Beaver pitching with Clark, the DP, for today's ball game. The first inning is presented by Barkley GMC of Tuscaloosa for over 42 years. Barkley makes it easy online at barkleygmc.com. Umpires for today's ball game. Behind home plate is James Coolsey. Aaron Golden, the first base umpire. Dustin Holton, third base umpire. First pitch is a ground ball. Cahalen has it at short. One pitch, one out. Emma Ritter grounds out to Kinley Cahalen to start things off. One pitch, one out for Kayla Beaver, and that will bring up Addie Green. Green batting 446 on the season, 37 of 83 with 26 runs scored, 11 doubles, a triple, six homers, and 26 runs driven in. First pitch to the lefty is in there for a called strike. The 0-1, fouled off at the plate. No balls and two strikes. Something Patrick Murphy just talked to us in our pregame interview about. It was a big focus of Lance McMahon. Don't fall down in the counts. Get ahead of these batters. Kayla Beaver doing so well here the first time through. The 0-2 is high. One ball, two strikes. Alabama leads the all-time series 6 nothing over the Hokies. Here in Tuscaloosa, the tide is 4-0 all-time against Virginia Tech, including the last time these two teams met when they were part of the 2022 Bama Bash. The 1-2 pitch, a little bit low, two balls and two strikes. And the tide won two excellent pitcher's duels, 1-0 and 2-0. Montana Fouts not allowing a run against the Hokies, against Emma Limley, who is the pitcher today for Virginia Tech, and Keely Rochard, the great Hokie pitcher, now professional. The 2-2 is grounded foul down the first baseline. Count remains 2-2. Two two. Bama 74-13 all-time against the current makeup of the ACC, including wins over Georgia Tech, Florida State, and Virginia all this season. Another 2-2, two -two, another foul ball. Tech, as Coach Murphy mentioned, currently 9-0 in ACC play. With 
and sweeps over Pittsburgh, Louisville, and Notre Dame. So they haven't really faced the meeted schedule yet in conference play, but posting a 9-0 mark. The 2-2. Just a bit outside, and the count is full. Three balls and two strikes. in the river. Didn't, did not miss my bunch, though. Payoff pitch to Green. Ground ball up the middle, and that's going to get through for a base hit. Diving intent by Hevlin at second, but it got past her. And that's a one-out single for Addie Green, first base runner of the ball game. Here one out in the first inning, just underway. No score between Virginia Tech and Alabama. Cameron Fagan will step in now, left-handed hitting second baseman. Fagan, senior batting 366, 34 of 93, 28 runs scored, eight doubles, seven homers, and 32 runs driven in. First pitch, high and tight for ball one. Today's weather and field condition report brought to you by the Cook Museum of Natural Science. Discover something amazing at the Cook Museum of Natural Science in downtown Decatur, Alabama. For more information, visit cookmuseum.org. First the 1-0. Jammed her. And that is a foul ball that hit her in the box. One ball and one strike. 62 degrees at first pitch under cloudy skies. The wind is blowing right to left. 8 to 10 miles an hour. We're hoping we will miss the rain showers. The 1-1. One -one. It's a ground ball to short. Cahalen there, throws a second for one. And Hevlin... Had some trouble making the transfer from the glove to the bare hand, so not able to turn the double play. But the force out does get the lead runner. And there's two gone. For the third baseman, Bree Peck. Peck, the right-handed hitting junior, batting 371. 33 of 89, 23 runs scored with five doubles, eight homers, and 30 runs driven in the first pitch. Misses a little bit low for ball one. The 1-0. Called strike. One ball, one strike now. The 1-1 pitch. Hits the inside corner. Ball and two strikes on her. Wind has pretty much died down. It was blowing relatively hard. In pregame. The one two pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Got her to chase. Low and away. And the Hokies can't get a runner past first base here in the first inning. For Virginia Tech, no runs on a hit, no errors, and one runner left. We move to the bottom of the first inning. Virginia Tech zero. Alabama coming back here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Airfield. First inning, no score between Virginia Tech and Alabama. Here's the DCH starting lineup for the Crimson Tide, who are 13th in the nation entering today's ballgame. The starters are presented by DCH Health System. 
DCH Health System has been providing quality and compassionate health care in West Alabama for nearly 100 years. DCH is a champion for your health and proud supporters of the Crimson Tide. Alabama is 24-5 overall. 12-3 here at the Rhodes House, currently on a three-game winning streak following the 4-3 victory over UAB on Wednesday. Leading off for Patrick Murphy's Crimson Tide is the left fielder, Jenna Johnson. Callie Hevlin, the second baseman, bats second. Abby Dukesher batting third, playing first. Catching batting fourth is Marley Giles. Kinley Cahalan, the shortstop, bats fifth. Bailey Dowling plays third and bats six, uh, Matt will bat six, batting seventh. Kendall Clark, the designated player. Emma Limley looks in, and here comes the first pitch in there for a called strike. Kendall Clark, the designated player, batting seventh. Batting eighth is Lauren Johnson, the right fielder, and Kristen White, center fielder, batting ninth. Emma Limley, the right-handed junior from Forest, Virginia, in the circle for the Hokies. The 0-1 pitch. Johnson lines this one to right. There to make the catch is McMillan for out number one. But Johnson claps as she heads back to the dugout. Got a good piece of that one. Opposite way, but stayed up in the air a bit too long. Limley on the year, batting with a uh, 250 ERA and a 5-1 and record. 17th appearance, 10th start. She has one complete game. She's pitched 56 innings on the year. Callie Hevlin steps in. And the first pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. 34 hits, 21 runs, 20 have been earned. She's walked 31, struck out 79. The opponent's batting 168 against Limley on the season. The 0-1, hits the inside corner, 0-2. Evelyn batting 275. 22 of 80 with 12 runs scored, four doubles, four homers, and 17 RBIs on the season. The 0-2 pitch. Evelyn fouls it away. We'll do it again. No balls and two strikes. Defensively for the Hokies, Green in left, Ritter in center, McMillan in right, Peck at third, Rose at short, Fagan at second, Chatfield at first, Jaeger catching, Limley pitching with Luco, the designated player. The 0-2 pitch. Evelyn lines that one foul down the left field line. Count remains 0-2. The first inning is presented by Barkley GMC of Tuscaloosa for over 42 years. Barkley makes it easy online at barkleygmc.com. Emily looks back in. And another 0-2 on its way. Chase the rise, four strike three. Does have one, and there's two gone. Went way up the ladder, did have one there. So there's now two out, nobody on for Abby Dukesher. Bama first baseman. Duke batting 361, 30 of 83, 11 runs scored, five doubles, six homers, and 26 RBIs on the season. First pitch, high for ball one. 200 down the lines, 220 to straightaway center field here at the Rhodes House. Six foot wall all the way around in the outfield. one is low. Two balls and no strikes. People still filing into the grandstand and the brickyard here at the Rhodes House. I'm sure the forecasted weather may have scared a few away. Should have nice weather tomorrow for the second matchup. 2-0 is swung on a miss, 2-1. and one. The 2-1. Dukesher foul tip that one in the glove, 2-2. Two and two. And we're still working to get on time with Limley. He does a really good job of changing speeds, and she can top it near 70, if not over. The 2 2. Rise ball swung on and missed for strike three. So Limley is able to get both Hevlin and Dukesher to climb the ladder and chase the rise ball. 
to strike out to end the inning. For the Tide here in the first, no runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left. We played an inning. No score between the Hokies and the Tide here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. The second inning is presented by Yellowhammer Brewing Company, Alabama's finest craft brewery. Hit your stride with a refreshing Yellowhammer beer, now available at stores near you. We head to the top of the second inning. No score between Virginia Tech and Alabama. Due up for the Hokies here in the second. McMillan, Chatfield, and Luco, 5-6-7 against Kayla Beaver. Back out in the circle for her second inning of work. Corey McMillan, the right fielder, will lead things off. Millen, a left-handed hitting junior, batting 355, 27 of 76 with 30 runs scored, five doubles, a triple, eight homers, and 29 runs driven in. Beaver toes are rubber, and here comes the first pitch. Fouled off for strike one. Alabama's head coach is Patrick Murphy. He's in his 26th season as the Alabama head coach. The tied head coaching record of 1,262 victories, 360 losses, a 778 winning percentage for the national champion and Hall of Famer. The 01 is in there for a strike going to. Assistant coach is Caleb Bro. Pitching coach, Lance McMahon. The hitting coach is Adam Arbor. Coordinator of player development is Ryan Aya Murray. Director of softball operations, Jaden Spencer. Affectionately known as Ribs. The 2 is a soft line drive that's going to fall for a base hit into center field. And a 0-2 pitch taken in the outfield for a leadoff single for Virginia Tech here in the second inning. And that brings up Michelle Chatfield. Chatfield, the right-handed hitting freshman, batting 370, 30 of 81, 23 runs scored, seven doubles, leads a team with 13 homers and 24 RBIs. First pitch, swung on a miss for strike one. Had three of those homers against for, against Maryland Eastern Shore in the midweek as Virginia Tech set a program record for most runs scored in a game and tied their program record for most hits in a game with 23. That one's fouled away. No balls and two strikes. They hit six total homers against Eastern Shore, and Michelle Chatfield had three of those. The 0-2, fouled off on a check swing on the rise, almost got her. We'll do it again, no balls and two strikes. A.C. Tinka is the athletic trainer for Alabama. The strength and conditioning coach is Michelle Diltz. Nathan Sheehan, sports information. The 0-2, ground ball stopped by Hevlin on the dive. She'll throw to first to get the out. Runner gets the second, but that's a great play by Callie Hevlin. 
Moving to her left toward the first base bag. Laid out, made the stop and the throw to get the out. McMillan moves the second, there's one away. And now, Maya Luco steps in. Right-handed hitting, and the first pitch. Foul back, four strike one. Luco, the senior, batting 421. This is her eighth star of the year. Eight of 19 with nine runs scored, two doubles, and eight RBIs on the season. DL one called strike, 0 and 2. Video director is Scott Moyer. The assistant video director is Lindsay Garcia. Equipment manager, Stu Moore, and Brianna Leonard, the sports nutritionist for the Crimson Tide. The 0-2 pitch, fouled off. Almost took out Zoe Yeager, who was on the in the on-deck circle. She avoided it. Count remains. No balls and two strikes. For Virginia Tech, the Hokies out of Blacksburg, Virginia, their head coach is Pete DeMore, who's in his sixth season and has really built a high-level program at Virginia Tech. The 0-2 pitch just misses a little outside, one and two. Associate head coach and recruiting coordinator is Mike Lewis. Pitching coach is Josh Johnson, and Humel Mata is the assistant coach for the Hokies. The 1-2. Jammed her for her check swing, fouled it off. We'll do it again, one ball and two strikes. Two, that one is line foul into the right field corner. We'll do it again, one ball and two strikes. Alabama wearing the crimson over white uniforms today, the crimson jerseys, baseball style outlined in white, white pants, crimson socks. Virginia Tech with the all white uniforms, white jerseys with the orange VT logo on the chest, white pants and orange socks. The one two pitch. Check swing on a rise, she didn't go. Two balls and two strikes. Two, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. We go chase one low and away. And there's two gone. And that tied strikeout, like all tied strikeouts, brought to you by Barkley GMC of Tuscaloosa. For over 42 years, Barkley makes it easy. Online at barkleygmc.com. Second strikeout of the day by Beaver. And that brings up the catcher, Zoe Yeager. Right-handed hitting, first pitch. Called strike. Yeager, freshman batting 378. 14 of 37, three runs scored with a double, two homers, and seven runs driven in. 14th start of the year for Jaeger. The 0-1. Ground ball to second. Havlin waits for it. Makes a stop in the throw for out number three to retire the side. The leadoff single for Virginia Tech can go, get no farther than second base here in the second inning. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. We move to the home half of the second. Still scoreless between Virginia Tech and Alabama here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield.
The second inning is presented by Yellowhammer Brewing Company, Alabama's finest craft brewery. Hit your stride with a refreshing Yellowhammer beer now available at stores near you. We move to the bottom of the second inning. No score between Alabama and Virginia Tech. Do up for the Tide here in the second. Giles, Cahalen, and Dowling. 4-5-6 against Emma Limley in the circle for Virginia Tech. Giles, the catcher, will lead things off. Right-handed sophomore batting 3 0 2 13 of 43, seven runs scored with four doubles, four homers, and eight RBIs. On base percentage, sitting right now at an even 500 with the 12 walks and six hit by pitches for Marley on the year. Tied looking for their first base runner after they tied, after Bama went down in order in the bottom of the first inning. Here comes the first pitch to Marley Giles. It's a called strike. Alabama's upcoming schedule brought to you by Yellowhammer Brewing Company, Alabama's finest craft brewery. Hit your stride with a refreshing Yellowhammer beer now available at stores near you. First the 0-1 pitch to Giles. High 1-1. One one. Game two between the Tide and the Hokies coming up tomorrow. First pitch is set for one. We'll be on the air at 12.50. The 1-1. Giles takes it a little bit low, 2-1. Elsewhere on the Crimson Tide Sports Network, we were going to have a chance to have all four sports, all four spring sports, I should say, that we carry on the Crimson Tide Sports Network going at the same time. The 2-1 to Giles. And that one's lifted to right. Underneath it is McMillan. She'll make the catch for out number one. Off the bat, that looked like that could be trouble, but it got caught up in the wind. Not enough behind it. And there's one away. And that will bring up Kenley Cahalen. But baseball went ahead and postponed their game tonight. They'll have a doubleheader tomorrow against Georgia. The doubleheader will start at 11. So just three sports as Kenley Cahalen steps in. The first pitch is high for ball one. Cahalen, the left-handed sophomore, betting 296. 24 of 81, 16 runs scored with four doubles, two homers, and 14 runs driven in. The 1-0 pitch fouled off. One ball, one strike. Bama women's basketball in the first round of the NCAA tournament taking on Florida State right now in Austin, Texas. First the 1-1 one -one pitch to Cahalen. Fouled off, 1-2. There's 20 seconds remaining in that ball game and Alabama has a, uh, excuse me, has an 80-72 lead over Florida State. So, Bama looking to hold on there and advance to the second round. The one-two is high, two balls and two strikes. Where they will very most likely face the number one seed, Texas Longhorns. The 2-2. It's a chopper back up the middle. The stop is made by Fagan. The throw is going to be in time to get Cahalen for out number two. Thought that might be a little bit of trouble for the Virginia Tech infield. So it got past Limley in the circle. Moving to her right was Fagan to make that stop and throw to get the out. And there's two away. For the third baseman, Bailey Dowling. First pitch, Dowling fouls it away. Four strike one, Bailey batting 301, 22 of 73 with eight runs scored, three doubles, two homers, and 13 runs driven in. High and away, one ball, one strike now on Dowling. 
Also on the air right now with the pregame show, it's Alabama men's basketball from Spokane, Was Spokane Washington. The 1-1, one, one. swing and a miss, 1-2. and two. Tip off coming up right about the top of the hour between the four seed Alabama Crimson Tide and the 13 seed College of Charleston in the West region. Keep you up to date as that game gets underway. The one two is outside, two balls and two strikes. Lindley looks in, and here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Dowling fouls it straight back. We'll do it again, two balls and two strikes. Two outs, nobody on, no score between Virginia Tech and Alabama here in the bottom of the second inning. Two two high and away, and the count's full. Three balls and two strikes. Limley looks in, and the payoff to Dowling it is lifted to center on the run, charging in, making the catch in shallow center field. Is Ritter for out number three? to retire the side. So for the Tide here in the second, no runs, no hits, no errors, no runners left. We played two, still 0-0, Alabama, Virginia Tech, here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. We head to the top of the third inning. No score between Alabama and Virginia Tech. The third inning is presented by Bojangles. Download the new Bojangles app and bring the flavor to your next softball tailgate with chicken, biscuits, and fixings, all by ordering ahead on the convenient Bojangles app. It's bow time, y'all. No scores. We move to the top of the third inning. Rose, Ritter, and Green do up for Virginia Tech. 9-1-2 against Caleb Beaver in the circle for Alabama. Annika Rose, the shortstop, will lead things off. Right-handed freshman betting 216, 8 of 37, six runs scored, two doubles, and two RBIs on the year. Rose steps in. And the first pitch. And that one's taken to right field. Foul ground on the run, but can't come up with it. In foul ground is Lauren Johnson. He'll fall foul for strike one. It's time for a scoreboard update brought to you by the Out of the Box podcast. And what an update we have. Check out, check out the latest episode of the Out of the Box podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Give us a follow at Out of the Box underscore pod on the X. The 01. Hi, 1 and 1. Also, be sure to check out the all-new It Just Means More Softball podcast from Softball America featuring Gray Robertson and myself live on YouTube on Monday evenings at 6. The 1-1 fouled away, 1-2. One 
Our colleague from Softball America, Tara Henry, is in the house here today, seeing her first ever game live at the Rhodes House. A new episode of the Out of the Box podcast dropped this morning, or excuse me, dropped on Tuesday morning. So you recap the week of Alabama softball. That one will fall foul again down the right field line, one and two. Talked with ESPN analyst and former Texas A&M star Tori Vidalis and had another epic Tom's Hungry from Tallahassee, Dothan, and Athens. Also on Monday on the Just Means More softball podcast on YouTube, we talked with Tennessee star Kiki Malloy, so be sure to check all that out. Subscribe, like, and share. The one-two. Rose, oh, takes it a little inside, two and two. So to the scoreboard updates. We got basketball. Of course, we have SEC softball as everybody who's not on their off week in the conference opening up their series here for the weekend. The 2-2 is fouled away into the tech bullpen. We'll do it again, two balls and two strikes. Again, Alabama women's basketball in the NCAA tournament. It's a final from Austin. Alabama 82, Florida State 74. So Alabama advances to the round of 32. Congratulations to Coach Curry and the squad. The 2-2 pitch fouled away again. Annika Rose giving Kayla Beaver quite a battle here. It's a nine hole starting off the third inning. Again, Alabama men's basketball will tip off top of the hour against College of Charleston. Two-two pitch. That one's grounded to short. And Kahalen bobbles it and drops it. Routine ground ball to the Bama shortstop. But the first error of the ball game puts the leadoff man on for Virginia Tech. Get her start off the third inning. She made the stop. And took her eye off it, moving it from the glove hand to the bare hand to make the throw. And just dropped it. So Annika Rose is on first, and Emma Ritter to the plate. She grounded out her first time up. First pitch. Is that called strike? Ritter, right-handed senior from Perryville, Maryland. So, top 25 scoreboard, which will encompass all the SEC scores as well. Boston U with a doubleheader sweep over Army, 9-3 and 9-0. That one's fouled away, 0-2. Surprise from Charlottesville. Virginia gets a 6-4 victory over Clemson. After the Tigers had a marathon game, and got the win over their rival South Carolina in the midweek, dropped the first game to Virginia. It's good for Alabama. The 0-2, fouled off. Another surprise in the American as East Carolina beats number 21 Charlotte 4-1. Bottom of the fifth in Orlando, Texas, with an early 5-0 lead over UCF. The 0-2 to Ritter. And that's a chopper that's going to get through for a base hit. Pass Halen at short. And now Virginia Tech has runners on first and second with nobody out here in the third. High chopper might have even hit home plate. Or right in front of it. And they got in the 5-6 hole. Now Beaver will look to try to tightrope herself away from Dan from damage here in the third inning, and Marley Giles goes out to have a word with Beaver and calls the entire Alabama infield over. Top of the fourth inning in Columbia, Missouri, LSU and Missouri tied up at seven. Both teams with a touchdown in that one as LSU tries to bounce back after a shocking series loss in Baton Rouge to Ole Miss last weekend, and Missouri tried to bounce back after getting swept by Tennessee last weekend. 
top of the fifth, Louisville with a one nothing lead over Duke. So just shockers all over the place right now. First pitch to Addie Green is lined to short. They'll throw to second for one. And oh, the throw from Hevlin hits the runner's helmet and bounces all the way into left field. A run will come in to score. Now they're going to call. Let's see what the final call is. If it's runner interference. That would be a double play, and the runner has to go back to third. Evelyn just threw it, and it just hit right off the helmet. Thank goodness it hit the helmet. Fortunately, we've seen what happened to Demi Turner a few years ago in Columbia, Missouri. That could have been very dangerous off of Emma Ritter. So the umpires have gotten together. We're trying to find out what the final call is. James Colsey has gone to explain it to all the coaches. Anna Rose, Annika Rose, as I said, she came in to score from second as the ball bounced all the way into left field. All right, guys, you have a, a microphone. There are two outs. So they have right now Addie Green still on first base. So the, the two outs, if I'm seeing this right, are Ritter and Rose. I think that's what we're going to go with. So that's quite the double play for Alabama. That double play, we want to remind you that in less time than an inning, you could be saving money by applying for a mortgage at assurancemortgage.com. Assurance Mortgage is a proud partner of the Crimson Tide. So we have two outs. We have a runner on first in Alabama. Close to getting out of this inning. The first pitch to Fagan is a one hopper to short. Charging in is, is Kahalen. She makes a stop in the throw in time. Green is out. And Kayla Beaver gets out of this third inning without allowing a run. For Virginia Tech here in the third inning, no runs on one hit. There was one error and one runner left on base. We played three. It was we moved to the bottom of the third. Still 0-0, Virginia Tech and Alabama here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from their field. It's a little confusing, but Alabama gets out of the third inning without allowing a run. The runner that was on second got called out on a runner's interference. And two 
outs were recorded. And then the ground out ends the inning for Virginia Tech. We move to the bottom of the third. Still 0-0. Kendall Clark, Lauren Johnson, and Kristen White do up. 7-8-9. Facing Emma Limley in the circle. Kendall Clark, the right-handed junior, batting 317, 13-41, 11 runs scored. Three doubles, a homer, and six RBIs on the year for Clark. As we continue the Out of the Box podcast scoreboard updates. Which I was in the middle of before we were so rudely interrupted by softball. First pitch to Kendall Clark is low for ball one. They're in the top of the fifth inning in Berkeley in Arizona and California knotted up at five. Bottom of the third in Gainesville, Florida with a 10-2 lead over Kentucky. So the rough start to the conference slate continues for the Wildcats. The 1-0 to Clark. Swung on and missed, 1-1. One one. Bottom of the second, Oklahoma with a 1-0 lead over Baylor. Bottom of the third in College Station, Auburn with a 1-0 lead over Texas A&M. The 1-1, high and away, 2-1. Top of the third, no score between App State and Texas State. Bottom of the second, BYU in Provo with a 5-1 lead over number three, Oklahoma State. So a rough week continues for the Cowgirls. We got upset by Tulsa on Wednesday. That one's in there for a strike, two and two on Clark. Top three, no score between Mississippi State and Arkansas. And coming up later, UCLA and Washington and Utah and Stanford. A lot of games to keep track of there. Two, two to Clark. And that one is lifted to shallow left center, charging in calling everyone off and making the catch is green for out number one. And that brings up the right fielder, Lauren Johnson. Johnson batting 351, 13 of 37 with 11 runs scored, two doubles and five RBIs on the year. First pitch is a called strike. In the NCAA men's basketball tournament, game's currently underway, 323 left in the first half. Texas A&M with an 11 point lead over Nebraska, it's 50 to 39. The 0-1, ooh, Johnson was going to bunt and it came up and hit her on the helmet. And I think as the first base umpire, Aaron Golden, James Colsey, discussed it, they're not giving Lauren Johnson first base. She was squared around a bunt and was moving up in the batter's box and took the pitch right off the face mask and the bill of the batter's helmet. Thank goodness she's wearing that face mask. Oh, goodness. That could have been very bad if not for the face mask. But I think they're going to say that she never pulled the bat back on the bunt, so it's a, sw a swinging strike. So, Lauren Johnson will get back in the batter's box here with an 0-1 count. Excuse me, an 0-2 count. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike three, chase the rise, and there's two away. That'll bring up the center fielder, Kristen White. White batting 333, 10 of 30 with six runs scored and an RBI on the season. 444 left in the first half. Duke with a 28-18 lead over Vermont. 
Grambling versus Purdue. Longwood in Houston, James Madison, Wisconsin. First pitch to White in there for a called strike. TCU and Utah State and Grand Canyon and St. Mary's all coming up later on. Now to the finals. The 0-1. High chopper to short. Coming up, making a stop in the throw. Just in time to get White is Rose for out number three to retire the side. So Alabama still looking for their first base runner after they've gone through the order once. Here in the third, no runs, no hits, no errors. No runners left. We move to the top of the fourth inning. Still 0-0 between Bod Tech and Alabama here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. The fourth inning is presented by Nukes. And Nukes, your food is always made to order in an open kitchen with the freshest ingredients. Visit them locally on University Boulevard or, or, or order online at nukes.com. Nukes is a proud supporter of Alabama softball. We head to the top of the fourth inning, 0-0 between Alabama and Virginia Tech. Due up for the Hokies here in the fourth will be Peck, McMillan, and Chatfield against Kayla Beaver in the circle for Alabama. Through three, the Beav has gone three innings, three hits, no runs, no walks, and two strikeouts, 47 pitches and 38 strikes thrown by Kayla Beaver. And we got clarification on what happened at the end of the top of the third on the runner's interference. Alabama was actually given the option of which other out they wanted to have, what other runner they wanted to have out. And, of course, you would take the lead runner. So that's why the lead runner of Rose was – called out. Ritter was called out for the interference. You had the runner on first and Cameron Fagan grounded out to end that third inning. Yes. Ray Robertson and Kaylee Tao talked to Patrick Murphy in, in the mid-game interview. Give you some of these finals from the first round of the NCAA men's basketball tournament. UConn beat Stetson 91-52. Marquette pulled away late to beat Western Kentucky 87-69. Baylor with a 92-67 over Colgate. A rough first round for the SEC continued, but no one around here very much upset about it as Yale with the upset victory over Blue Blood Auburn, 78-76, knocking the Tigers out in the first round as Bree Peck pops his first pitch. She sees foul, jammed her high and tight. Four strike one. Alabama also is now the lone representative of the four state of Alabama teams to make the NCAA tournament as San Diego State got a 69-65 victory over UAB. That one's a one-hopper. It got past Beaver. Cahalen makes a stop back behind the second base bag, but will have no throw. And that's an infield single for Bree Peck. Fourth hit of the ball game for Virginia Tech. They've all been singles. And for the third consecutive inning, the Tech, uh, Tech has the leadoff man on. So now Corey McMillan steps in. The first pitch is high and tight for ball one. McMillan singled her first time up. Clemson with a 77-56 win over New Mexico. 
And quite a barn burner. Colorado with a 102 to 100 victory over Florida. Gators eliminated. The 1-0, ground ball to second, underhand to second for one, and Alabama turns the double play. This time a more conventional one. Twin killing. And now the bases are cleared with two outs. Hard hit ground ball to second. Heaven made the stop. The underhand throw to second for one. Kahalen with the turn and the throw. Got McMillan. And there's two away now for Michelle Chatfield. First pitch is a fly ball to right. There to make the catch is Lauren Johnson, and that's a 1-2-3 inning. There was a hit in there, but it was erased by the double play for Virginia Tech. No runs on one hit, no errors, and no runners left. We move to the bottom of the fourth, 0-0 between Virginia Tech and Alabama here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. The fourth inning is presented by Nukes. At Nukes, your food is always made to order in an open kitchen with the freshest ingredients. Visit them locally on University Boulevard or order online at nukes.com. Nukes is a proud supporter of Alabama softball. We head to the home half of the fourth inning. No score between Alabama and Virginia Tech. Due up for the Tide here in the fourth. Top of the order, Johnson, Hevlin, and Dukeshire facing Emma Limley in the circle for Virginia Tech. Limley so far... Three innings, no hits, no runs, no walks, and three strikeouts. 38 pitches, 27 strikes thrown by Limley. The right-handed junior for Virginia Tech, Emma Limley, currently throwing a perfect game. A perfect game being pitched by Emma Limley, the Virginia Tech pitcher. Jenna Johnson will lead things off, looking to break up the perfect game currently being thrown by Emma Limley. Here comes the first pitch as she's throwing a perfect game. Johnson with a fly ball that had home run distance without the direction down the left field line for strike one. I really thought I had done it. <laughs> Johnson's up for one. She flew out to right her first time up. The L1 called strike going two. And the final final to get to the first overtime game of the NCAA tournament Her, happened earlier today as Northwestern got a 77-65 victory over FAU. It's no Cinderella run for the Owls this year. The 0-2 pitch is high. One ball, two strikes now on Jenna Johnson. It's also the first day of the Round of 64 in the women's tournament. I'll give you those scores here momentarily. The one-two pitch. Johnson swings and misses at strike three. So what out now for Callie Hevlin. Hevlin struck out her first time up. As we mentioned earlier, Alabama advanced with an 82-74 win over Florida State. First pitch to Hevlin, swung on a miss for strike one. 4.47 left in the game. Baylor, no trouble with Vanderbilt, 78 to 58. Score there. The 
the 0 1. Hevlin puts down a bunt, but pops it foul. 0 and 2. 3.49 left in the first half. Colorado with a 40 36 lead over Drake. In the first quarter, at the end of the first quarter, Maryland with a 33 20 lead over Iowa State. Eastern Washington, Oregon State, Norfolk State, and Stanford, and Texas A&M, Nebraska coming up later. Texas A&M and Nebraska facing off in both the men's and the women's tournament. Trev Albert's excited about that, I'm sure. So first, as that pitch is high, one and two. Finals, South Carolina, no problem with Presbyterian, 91 to 39. Texas beat Drexel, 82 to 42, so will be Alabama and Texas coming up on Sunday from Austin. The one, two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Have one down on strikes for the second time today, and there's two gone. Ohio State beat Maine 80 to 57. LSU pulled away late to beat Rice 70 to 60. Virginia Tech 92-49 win over Marshall. As Abby Dukeshire steps in, she's up for one with a strikeout. Emma Limley currently throwing a perfect game. Emma looking for the first base runner. First pitch, high for ball one. Kansas State with a 78-65 victory over Portland. First big upset of the tournament, Middle Tennessee, the 11 seed, beat the number six seed, Louisville, 71-69. to One to Duke. Called strike, one and one. Duke beat Richmond 72 to 61, and it was North Carolina over Michigan State 59 to 56. Here's no score, Alabama, Virginia Tech. Two out, nobody on for the tide here in the fourth. The 1-1, one, one, fouled away. One ball, two strikes. One, two. Dukeshire pops it up sky high on the infield. Ranging over, making the catch in the circle is Peck from third for out number three to retire the side. So Emma Limley through four, still throwing a perfect game for Virginia Tech. For Alabama, no runs, no hits, no errors. No runners left. We move to the top of the fifth inning. Still 0-0 between... Virginia Tech and Alabama here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Airfield. The fifth inning is presented by Yellowhammer Brewing Company, Alabama's finest craft brewery. Hit your stride with a refreshing Yellowhammer beer now available at stores near you. We move to the top of the fifth inning. Still 0-0, Alabama and Virginia Tech do up for the Texters here in the fifth inning. Bottom of the order, Luco Yeager and Rose, 7-8-9 against Kayla Beaver in the circle for Alabama. No runs on four hits, no errors, and three left for Virginia Tech. For Alabama, no runs, no hits, one error, and no runners left on base. Kayla Beaver, excuse me, Emma Limley for Virginia Tech, currently throwing a no-hitter. Perfect game. The first pitch to Maya Luco. 
is a little bit high for ball one. Luco struck out her first time up. Senior from Reston, Virginia. The 1-0. A little high and outside, 2-0. and Big win for Hot Sauce in the Taco Hot Sauce race for those of you keeping track. As predicted by one Tom Canterbury. In the chase for the Lindsey Jones Cup up here in the press box. Prestigious. A 2-0. Fouled away. 2-1. Taking a look at Alabama softball on this date. Alabama 11-6 all time on March 22nd. Outscoring opponents 108-60. Tide got doubleheader sweeps over Kentucky in 2003 and 2008 on this date and run ruled Auburn in 2013. The 2-1, swing and a miss, 2-2. Two and two. More recently, in 2019, Bama traveled to College Station and beat Texas A&M 13-3 in six innings in the first of a three-game series in College Station on this date. And last year, it was a 12-0 run rule win over UAB here in Tuscaloosa. The 2-2. Two -two. Hopped up foul, got her to chase a rise ball high and inside, but Luco got a piece of it, popped it foul. Count remains, two balls and two strikes. Two-two. High and outside, and the count's full. Three balls and two strikes on Maya Luco. Maya spelled M-A-I-J-A. -A. Payoff pitch. Fouled off. made Beaver throw a lot of pitches. This will be the 60th of the game. For the Beaver, about to be thrown. 3-2. Hits the inside corner for a called strike three. Luco sits down on strikes for the second time today. And there's one gone here in the fifth. Third strike out of the day by Kayla Beaver. And that brings up Zoe Yeager. First pitch. Hit the outside corner for a called strike. Yeager's 0 for 1. She grounded out her first time up. Freshman from Neptune Beach, Florida. High school, the Providence School of Jacksonville. The 0-1. Right in there for a called strike, 0-2. The 0-2, a little outside, one ball, two strikes. The one-two is high, two balls and two strikes. The two-two, swing and a miss, strike three. Got her with the drop, and there's two away. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Beaver. We'll bring up the shortstop. Well, supposed to bring up the shortstop, Annika Rose, but it looks like we were going to see a pinch hitter for Virginia Tech. As it will be, Trinity Martin. 
The sophomore lefty from Natalie, Virginia. Grabbing a bat. For the nine hole hitter. Martin batting 353 on the year. The first pitch is a call strike. Six of 17, four runs scored, a double, a homer, and seven RBIs. Neil one. Oh, she went too far around on a check swing. Oh, and two. Beaver hasn't been perfect, but she's been able to match Limley, who is throwing a perfect game currently for Virginia Tech. The 0-2. That one's lifted to deep left on the run and making the catch. Heading towards the warning track is Jenna Johnson for out number three to retire the side. And for the second straight inning, the first time without allowing a hit, Kayla Beaver gets... The Hokies, one, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors. No runners left for Virginia Tech here in the fifth. We stretch in Tuscaloosa. No score between Alabama and Virginia Tech here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from their field. The fifth inning is presented by Yellowhammer Brewing Company, Alabama's finest craft brewery. Hit your stride with a refreshing Yellowhammer beer now available at stores near you. We move to the home half of the fifth inning. 0-0, Alabama and Virginia Tech. Due up for the tide here in the fifth, Giles, Cahalan, and Dowling. 4-5-6 against Emma Limley in the circle for Virginia Tech. Limley, through four innings, has not allowed a base runner as of yet. Face the minimum, no hits, no walks. No errors. We call that a perfect game, and that's what Emma Limley has through four. But the game's not over, and Alabama still tied at zero. We're looking to break up the perfect game here with Marley Childs to the plate. First pitch to Marley is a called strike. Childs, sophomore from Clanton, Alabama. Would love to break up the perfect game here. Rose did ring into the ball game. She's back at shortstop for Virginia Tech. The 0-1 is a fly ball to center. There to make the catch is Ritter for out number one. And Limley still with the perfect game with Kinley Cahalan stepping in. She's 0 for 1. She grounded out her first time up. They've tipped off in Washington. There's 14.02 left in the first half. Charleston with a 15-11 lead over Alabama. First pitch to Cahalan. That one's well hit to deep left, but that's going to stay in the ballpark. The catch is made by Green, and there's two away. So on two flyouts, two out, nobody on for Bailey Dowling. She's 0 for 1. She had to fly out her first time up. Dowling, the senior from St. Joseph, Illinois. She'll step in. Trying to be Bama's first base runner. First pitch. Squares around the bunt. Pulls it back. It's high and outside for ball one. And 
Give you some more scoreboard updates from softball specifically. A lot of interesting games going on right now. The 1-0. Blowing in, 2-0. Top of the fifth in Fayetteville, Arkansas with a 3-0 lead over Mississippi State. The 2-0. That one's fouled off. 2-1. It's game two of the series. Oklahoma State won game one yesterday, but BYU here in game two with a 10-4 lead over the Cowgirls in Provo in a Big Ten matchup. Big 12, excuse me. The 2-1, fouled off, 2-2. Two and two. Top of the fifth, Texas State leads App State 1-0. Oklahoma and Baylor tied at one through four. Bottom five, Texas A&M and Auburn tied at one. It's a final from Gainesville. Florida wins game one of that series against Kentucky, 10-2. The 2-2, two -two pitch to Dowling. It's in the dirt. Three balls and two strikes. Bottom of the sixth in Berkeley, Arizona, the five, an 8-5 lead over Cal. Top seven, it's the last chance for Duke. Louisville leads Duke, 2-0, looking for the upset there. Payoff pitch to Dowling. It's low for ball four, and Bailey Dowling is Alabama's first base runner. That breaks up the perfect game with two outs here in the fifth. To bring up Kendall Clark. It looks like we are going to have a pinch runner for Dowling on first as Clark will look to now break up the no-hitter. It's gone crazy in Columbia as Kenley Pate will come in to run for Dowling. Alabama gets their first base runner here in the bottom of the fifth in a scoreless ball game with Virginia Tech, and Kendall Clark will step in. They're in the bottom of the fifth in Columbia, Missouri. Missouri and LSU knotted up at nine. First pitch to Kendall Clark. Squares around a bunt. It's low for ball one. We are seeing action in the Virginia Tech bullpen. And when we read the stats to begin the ball game, they have noticed Emil Emily has only thrown one complete game all year. The 1-0. Clark swings and misses. Pate takes off, and she will steal second base just ahead of the throw. Hit and run there. Clark wasn't able to make contact, but Pete, excuse me, Pate beat out the throw, so the stolen base for Kinley Pate. Her seventh of the season in, in as many attempts. The 1 1. Clark lines up the middle. That's down for a base hit. Pate will round third. Here comes the throw from center. It's not in time. RBI single for Kendall Clark. Breaks up the no-hitter and gives Alabama the one nothing lead. All of this with two outs. Now Lauren Johnson will look to keep it going. She struck out her first time up after she was hit in the face with a pitch. The first pitch is a fly ball to shallow center coming up and making the catch as Ritter for out number three to retire the side. But Alabama breaks up the perfect game in the no-hitter and the shutout for Emma Limley here in the fifth inning. As Bama gets one run on one hit, there were no errors, and one runner left on base. We've played five, Alabama one, Virginia Tech nothing, here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield.
in what I believe is the first time ever. Dixieland Delight here at the Rhodes House. As Alabama takes the one nothing lead over Virginia Tech, we head to the top of the sixth inning. The sixth inning is presented by the Alabama Crimson Tide Game Day Live app. Keep up with everything Alabama with the Alabama Crimson Tide Game Day Live mobile app presented by Cadence Bank. Download now for free at the App Store and Google Play. Top of the order due up for the Hokies here in the sixth. Ritter, Green, and Fagan against Kayla Beaver in the circle for the Crimson Tide. Alabama has taken a 1-0 lead on an RBI single by Kendall Clark in the home half of the fifth that broke up the no-hitter thrown by Emma Limley. Emma Ritter steps in the first pitch. Right in there for a called strike. Ritter one for two with a single and a ground out. Final from Orlando, Texas beat UCF 5-0. Comes in low, one and one. Other games in the NCAA tournament currently underway on the men's side. 17-43 left in the game. Texas A&M with a 64-52 lead over Nebraska. The one one to Ritter. Ground ball on two hops to short. Kahalen with the throw and a nice stretch by Abby Dukesher. Kept her foot on the bag. Used all of that six-foot frame to make the catch and the throw and gets a hug from Kahalen, and there's one away. Duke with a five-point lead over Vermont at the half, 34-29. Purdue with a 26-17 lead over Grambling, trying to avoid the 116 upset. What happened to him last year is Addie Green steps in, and the first pitch fouled away for strike one. And in case you missed it earlier, Yale with a 78-76 win over Auburn. Caleb Eber took an extra couple of seconds there. Before she got back in the circle. Looks like she's okay, though. The 0-1 fouled away. No balls and two strikes. On the women's side, as we discussed, Alabama advanced in the first round, beating Florida State 82-74. They'll play Texas on Sunday. Halftime, Colorado leads Drake 46-41. Maryland with a 52-36 lead over Iowa State at the half. The 0-2 high and away, one ball, two strikes. Eastern Washington with an early 9-8 lead over Oregon State in the first quarter. Now basketball back within one against Charleston, 19-18, 11.06 left in the first half. That one drops in a bit too far low and inside, two and two on Addie Green. Green's one for two, singled in the first and had a fielder's choice in the third. The 2-2, two -two. Green lines it, foul down the right field line, 2-2. Two and two. And I'm underselling it saying it was a fielder's choice. It was a ground ball. Alabama's trying to turn a double play, so there's runners on first and second. The thrown ball hit the runner, and Alabama was able to pick which runner they wanted to get called out. So they, of course, chose the lead runner. And so Green reached on a fielder's choice. The 2-2. Two -two. Low and away, and the count is full, three and two. One out, nobody on, top six, one nothing Alabama. First to two between the Tide and the Hokies. Alabama will play Virginia Tech again tomorrow at one o'clock. 12.50 will be the airtime here on the network. Payoff pitch. Hit the, no, it's outside on a check swing. She didn't go. And that'll be the first walk of the game issued by Kayla Beaver. I didn't think she went, but I thought it might have hit the outside corner. 
even without the check swing. James Colsey said no, is outside. And now Cameron Fagan will step in with a runner on first and one out. Fun fact about James Colsey, the home plate umpire today, he's also the head football coach at Florida A&M. First pitch to Cameron Fagan is low for ball one. He was named the head coach of the Rattlers just a couple of months ago. But still, tending to his duties as a NCAA D1 softball umpire. The 1-0 to Fagan. Low again, two balls and no strikes. Fagan's 0 for 2 with a fielder's choice and a ground out. The 2-0. Soft liner, that's going to get over Cahalen's head into left field for a base hit. And a walk and a single now. Put two runners on here with one out in the sixth. For the cleanup hitter, the third baseman, Bree Peck. Peck one for two. Strikeout in the first and a single in the fourth. First pitch. Hits the inside corner for strike one. The 0 1. Hits the inside corner again. No balls and two strikes. The 0-2, swing and a miss, strike three. Beaver on three straight pitches, sits down the cleanup hitter, and there's two away. And that got a big reaction from both Beaver and Marley Giles. And now Corey McMillan steps in the first pitch. Called strike, 0-1. McMillan is one for two, singled in the second, ground, ground into a double play in the fourth. The 0-1, and that's a ground ball to second. Hevlin's there, the underhand throw, out number three, and Alabama gets out of it again here in the sixth. The Hokies got two runners on, but a strikeout and a ground out end it. For Virginia Tech here in the sixth, no runs on a hit, no errors, and two runners left on base. We move to the home half of the sixth, one nothing Alabama here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield. Alabama One is a proud supporter of University of Alabama women's athletics. At Alabama One, we believe in a community-first approach and are proud to provide a full suite of financial products and services with excellent Alabama 1, Virginia Tech nothing. Due up for the Tide here in the 6. 9-1-2, White, Johnson, and Hevlin. Emma Emily back out in the circle for Virginia Tech. The 6th inning is presented by the Alabama Crimson Tide Game Day Live app. Keep up with everything Alabama with the Alabama Crimson Tide Game Day Live mobile app. 
Presented by Cadence Bank. Download it now for free at the App Store and Google Play. Chris and White to lead things off for Alabama here in the sixth inning. They'd love to get a run or two more of insurance before Virginia Tech gets an opportunity in the seventh. First pitch to White. Puts a nice bunt down. It checks up perfectly. The throw is not going to be anywhere near in time. And Kristen White leads off the sixth inning with a bunt single. Great celebration with Caleb Bro in the first base coaching box as well. Just perfectly placed about five feet in front of home plate. It checked up. By the time Peck got there, no chance to throw out White. And now Jenna Johnson to the plate. First pitch, Johnson pops up a bunt and making the catch down the first baseline is Chatfield for the first out of the inning. Alabama trying to play some small ball here in the six. Good idea, but Johnson not able to get it down. Now Callie Hevlin steps in. Runner on first, one out. Hevlin's over two with a couple of strikeouts. She does not bunt, fouls this one away for strike one. Deal one. Hevlin again fouls it away. No balls, two strikes. Elsewhere on the Crimson Tide Sports Network, they're at the under eight media timeout. 6.59 left in the first half. Alabama is taking a 30-26 lead over the College of Charleston. First round of the NCAA tournament. The 0-2. Hevlin takes it high. One ball, two strikes. Bottom of the six in College Station, Texas A&M leads Auburn 3-1. The 1-2, Hevlin swings and misses at strike three, and Callie struck out for the third time today, and there's two away. And Duke down to their final out in Louisville, scored three in the top of the seventh. Take a 3-2 lead over the Cardinals. Abby Dukeshire now steps in, runner on first two outs. The first pitch, swing and a miss, strike one as Duke chased the rise. And in Missouri, they're at the bottom of the six now. Tigers and L and both, both Tigers, Missouri and LSU. It's now 10-9 Missouri. Just a crazy game there. The 0-1 misses outside, 1-1. One one. The 1-1 one one pitch. Duke sure fouls it off on a hit and run. 1-2. Limley has definitely got Alabama batters to chase more than I've seen pretty much all year long. She's one of the best pitchers Alabama's faced all year long. The one two is low and away and taking off and stealing is white and the throw almost gets into center field. Jaeger's throw had it not been for a pretty nice play from Fagan. Might have ended up in the right center field gap. But Fagan was able to keep it on the infield and keep White at second with just a stolen base. Saving an error. Now the 2-2. Dukeshire swings and misses at strike three. And it's been a rough... Ball game for basically the top 
five batters in this Alabama lineup. But Alabama holds on to the lead. Here in the sixth inning, Alabama gets no runs on one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. We head to the seventh inning and the last chance for Virginia Tech. It's 1-0 Alabama here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from their field. The seventh inning is presented by Tuscaloosa Ford. We'd like to thank Tuscaloosa Ford for providing transportation for the Crimson Tide Sports Network to all the season's away games. Visit Tuscaloosa Ford for your next vehicle purchase. Roll Tide with Tuscaloosa Ford. We move to the seventh inning, the last chance for Virginia Tech. Alabama with a 1-0 lead over the Hokies. Due up for Virginia Tech here in the seventh. Chatfield, Luco, and Yeager. 6-7-8. Caleb Eber in, for, in the circle for the Crimson Tide looking to finish things off. One change defensively for Alabama. Emma Broadfoot is now at first, replacing Abby Dukesher. And Michelle Chatfield to lead things off. She's over two with a ground out and a fly out. First pitch is popped up foul. It will get out of play for strike one behind the contingent of Virginia Tech fans that have made was well, not a short trip from Blacksburg. If you drive, it's about eight hours. The 0-1. Ooh, just misses. A little inside. One ball, one strike. The 1-1, one, one. and that's a ground ball to short. Cahalen makes the stop, and the throw is in time to get Chatfield for out number one. Cahalen making a backhanded play at deep short. Long throw across the diamond. Just in time to get Chatfield, and there's one away. And that will bring up Maya Luco. Luke goes 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. First pitch. A little high for ball one. The 1 0 pitch. A little outside this time, 2 and 0. Wind has shifted. It's now blowing pretty much straight in. Two zero. Luco fouls it off. Count moves to two and one, and they're going to check that ball because it went right off the end of the bat. That means that pitch moving low and away from the right-handed hitters is really working right now for Caleb Beaver. Two and one the count. The two one. Right back up the middle. Kahalen makes the stop behind the second base bag. The throw is in time. And what a play by Kenley Kahalen. 
to get the second out of the inning. She wasn't even shaded over that way. Ground ball got past Beaver. Cahalen made the stop and the throw from behind the second base bag. Callie Hevlin had to duck out of the way of it. And Luco was out by a full step. That's eight assists on the day for Cahalen. To this inning. And we will see a pinch hitter is the last chance for the Hokies. Emma Mazzaroni is the last chance for Virginia Tech. First pitch is in there for a called strike. Mazzaroni, a left-handed freshman from Pleasant Garden, North Carolina, is 5 of 22 on the year with a run score to Homer and five RBIs. The 0-1. Little inside, one ball, one strike. The one one. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes, and Alabama has Virginia Tech down to their final strike. Beaver looks in, the one, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Beaver sits the Hokies down in order here in the seventh and gets the complete game shutout victory by a final score of one to nothing. With the win, Alabama improves to 25 and five overall. They move to a four game win streak. Virginia Tech falls to 24, five and one, and that snaps a four game win streak for the Hokies. One run on two hits, one error and two left for Alabama. No runs on five hits, no errors, and five runners left for Virginia Tech. Beaver gets the win. She's now 10 and two on the year. Limley takes a loss. She's now five and two. We'll take a timeout, come back with the Fast Signs of Tuscaloosa post-game report as Alabama gets the one nothing win over Virginia Tech here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network from Learfield.
This copyright broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Alabama. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of the University of Alabama and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the University of Alabama. It's a fast signs of Tuscaloosa post-game report as Alabama gets the one nothing win over Virginia Tech, and that is now seven straight wins over Virginia Tech for Alabama, and the last three here in Tuscaloosa have been final scores of one nothing, 2 nothing, and one nothing. as we have seen some tremendous pitchers' duels, and Alabama shuts out a team that is coming off of setting a school record for runs in a game and tying a school record for hits in a game as Virginia Tech in the midweek had a 25 nothing victory over Maryland Eastern Shore on 23 hits. Here in Tuscaloosa, no runs on five hits. Alabama was struggling at the plate. A lot of that was because Emma Limley was just absolutely on fire in the circle for Alabama, but they were able to get a run across in the fifth Did Alabama after breaking up the perfect game, and Alabama wins by a final score of one to nothing. We want to remind all Crimson Tide fans to stay up to date with all recommended vaccinations. Flu season is here, and COVID-19 continues to affect our community, so don't wait. Vaccinate. Here are the final stats from today's ball game. We'll start with Virginia Tech, who falls to 24-5-1 and one overall. No runs on five hits, no errors, and five runners left on base. Emma Ritter was one for three. A.D. Green was one for two with a walk. Cameron Fagan was one for three. Bree Peck was one for three. Corey McMillan was one for three. Michelle Chatfield was 0 for 3. Maya Luca was 0 for 3. Zoe Yeager was 0 for 2. Emma Mazzaroni is a pinch hitter is 0 for 1. Annika Rose was 0 for 1. And Trini Martin as a pinch hitter was 0 for 1. Located on the UA campus just across from Coleman Coliseum, be sure to check out the Bryant Museum up in every day, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. except Mondays. Access online at bryantmuseum.com. In the circle, Emma Limley takes the hard luck loss. She went complete. Six innings. She falls to five and two with the loss. Six innings, two hits, one run. It was earned, one walk, and seven strikeouts. She threw 74 pitches and 52 strikes, did Limley here in the ballgame. For Alabama, they improved to 25 and five with the victory. One run in the fifth inning, one run on two hits, one error, and two runners left on base. Jenna Johnson was 0 for 3. Callie Hevlin 0 for 3. Abby Dukeshire 0 for 3. Marley Giles 0 for 2. Kenlika Halen was 0 for 2. But Bailey Dowling broke up the perfect game as she drew a walk. She was 0 for 1. Kenley Pate, her pinch runner, scored on Kendall Clark, who broke up the no-hitter with an RBI single. She was two for 1 for 2 with that RBI. Lauren Johnson was 0 for 2, and Kristen White was 1 for 2. With six locations in West Alabama, University Medical Center provides comprehensive health care for you and your family. Call 205-348-1770 for an appointment. In the circle, Kayla Beaver improves her record to 10-2 on the year with a complete game shutout victory. Seven innings, five hits, no runs, one walk, and six strikeouts. 97 pitches and 71 strikes thrown by the Beave. Time of the game, one hour and 41 minutes. 3,613 of the best softball fans in the country paid to see it as Alabama gets the one nothing victory over Virginia Tech. Quick update from March Madness. One, uh, excuse me, 154 left in the first half. Alabama now leading College of Charleston 45-32 to as Alabama is on a 10-0 run currently. They scored 10 runs in under two minutes, a minute 57 seconds for that 10-0 run to stretch out that lead over College of Charleston looking to advance in the NCAA tournament. Tom's final thought is brought to you by DCHL System. DCHL System has been providing quality and compassionate health care in West Alabama for nearly 100 years. DCH is a champion for your health and proud supporters of the Crimson Tide. Here's my final thought before we wrap things up here today. What a win. That was amazing for Alabama to fight and claw and just find a way to scratch and run across against an elite pitcher who was throwing an elite ball game was Emma Limley. Alabama gets that one run across. But speaking of elite pitchers, Kayla Beaver, a complete game shutout against a team who is top five nationally in numerous categories offensively. To hold this Hokie team scoreless on five hits, really impressive. Great job defensively for Alabama as well. One or two double plays, depends on how that weird double play is scored on the uh, runner's interference, whether or not Alabama's credited with a double play there or not. If they're not, that's 14. If they are, that's 15 double plays by turn by this Alabama defense. 
this season so far. Alabama hasn't had 20 or more double plays in a season since 2007, so we have seen this Alabama defense really help out their pitchers with those twin killings and happen here again today. Turn one, if not two, and a great job defensively as well. Kenley Cahalen had the one error but also had eight uh, assists defensively, including a great uh, stop and throw with one out in the seventh inning to keep the Hokies off the base pads in the seventh. So just overall, a really good win pitching-wise and defensively. You only got two hits, but you got one where you needed it, and uh, you were doing it against an elite pitcher. So you'll be very happy with the victory. And now we'll move on to tomorrow's matchup against Virginia Tech. Would not be stunned as both these pitchers were under 100 pitches in the ball game if these will be your starters again tomorrow. But we'll see what happens uh, as Alabama takes on Virginia Tech again tomorrow for game two of this two-game non-conference set. That's going to do it for this broadcast of the Mammoth Softball Post Game Report brought to you by, by Fast Signs. Fast Signs at Tuscaloosa is more than fast and more than signs. Request a free quote from Fast Signs for all your business visibility needs. Fast Signs at Tuscaloosa is a proud supporter of Crimson Tide Softball. The Vice President and General Manager of the Crimson Tide Sports Network is Jim Carabin. Our live booth cam operator and producer is Ethan Carabin. And our studio engineer has been Noah Haynes. For everyone here at the Crimson Tide Sports Network, I'm Tom Canterbury saying thank you for joining us as Bama gets the one nothing win over Vod Tech. Tune in again tomorrow for Game 2 between the Tide and the Hokies. First pitch is set for 1. We'll be on the air at 12.50. Until then, Roll Tide from Tuscaloosa. <laughs>